It's Wednesday morning, and you know what that means. It's time for another episode of the Alabama Slam Podcast. I'm your host, Corey Hanna. Did you forget the name of what the I podcast was for a second? I did for a second. <laughs> Patrick Akers, what's up? And I'd like to take a moment to, of silence here to pay our respects to the dearly departed Collision theme song. R.I.P. Brothers. <sighs> you know, not that Elton John needed any more play. Did they, did they lose it? Yeah. They lost it. And the new... Listen, whatever was going to replace... Oh, it was going to suck. It was going to suck. Yeah. You do know it job. sucks too. Yeah. It's tough. Tough beat. So just come in with a match. Yeah, but, but no, no, they've got a new song. It's, uh, it just sucks. It's a, it's generic as generic could be. <sighs> it's Braun Breaker's theme. I'm pretty sure. It's yeah. it's probably the 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 second choice for Braun Breaker's theme. They <sighs> they went with the one he originally has and then gave this one to AEW to use as a collision theme. But I, I want to say that if it's a it's a cost cutting measure. They're trying to save some money. <laughs> but I can think of at least thirty other ways you can save some money and keep that banger of a song to make that that whole show yeah. better. Yeah, come on now. Hey, we gotta we gotta get Bobby Lashley and MVP and Shelton Benjamin AEW. Sounds like so. <laughs> Yeah, let's let's ease into it then. Um, oh, that's not easy. I don't, know we, <laughs> I don't know if that was an ease into it. <laughs> well, since I, as mentioned, I I didn't see Collision, um, so we'll get notes from Stephen and Patrick on that. Um, uh, I did not see Collision or SmackDown because I was uh, in Georgia. Um, but let's get into Dynamite. You let's were in start a off. cabin with a bunch of men. I was yeah. in the cabin. We'll just leave it at that. Yeah, Total sausage and fest. a bunch of beers, <laughs> too many beers, uh, and bourbon and uh, meat, like picanha and sausages, and just eating too what much. What the hell's picanha? It's like the top sirloin cut that you cut into little steaks. It's becoming like a new... I've learned about it on one of the shows I edit on. So, oh, is that fancy, fancy it, or something? It's not fancy. It's just like, it's just like tri tip, only different. Ish, yeah. Ish. Okay, okay, yeah. Gotcha. Um, but it's like a Bra- like when you go to like a Brazilian steakhouse or something, they got a lot of picanha. Gotcha. Right. Um, so anyway, we did that uh, and had a good time. Um, Dynamite, Osprey versus MJF. We get a PPV style match, like a pay per view style match to start the show. Um, th- these dudes were still going and doing super athletic shit in like the 50th and 55 minute mark. It wasn't like they were just dragging their asses around the ring just for the sake of being in the ring at that point. Um, and then it would, it ended up going like 59, 59 or some shit. 59, like 58, 59, 58. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Hell of a way to start the show last week. I thought. Steven, what did you think of it before I jump in? You go right ahead, man. I, I was all right. It was okay. It was an okay match. I mean, I I didn't need 59 minutes and 58 seconds of it. That's exa- that's what I was hoping you were going to say. Did this need to be this long? No. But at this point with AEW, it's a little bit like, I don't know why I was when I was watching this match, I thought of like the band Queen. <laughs> it was like, does Bohemian Rhapsody need to be what it is? No. Probably not. I need a guitar solo in like 17 different ways that goes into the song. But like, that's just who they are. Yep. And they're not going to apologize for it. And so I kind of like, for as much as we are critical of AEW, and a lot of it is, you know, well-deserved on their part. This is just who they are. Sometimes they're going to have 60-minute TV matches. Sometimes the pay-per-views are going to be four and a half hours. And like, that's just what we're going to do. And I kind of I kind of dig that they are just boss to the wall. This is who we are. We're not going to change. Either get with us or, or or don't. But here's what we are. And for the ratings kind of showed it. The ratings were up significantly for this week from what yeah. I saw. And I know we're not a big ratings podcast, but like, you know, with ratings struggling, as you were trying to get more people to become fans of AEW, why not just put two huge superstars like MJF and Osprey out there and let them go for an hour. My, my, I watched this thing like three times and that was because I fell asleep in it a couple times because it's, I don't know if that says something about the wrestling. I don't know if it says something about me, but I fell asleep in it a couple times. But my issue with this match, well, there's two issues. A, the ending of it, you, you had shit camera angles to show me what actually happened. The only image you showed me of it was a ring sitting on the outside of the thing because it didn't look like he put on the ring, didn't look like he hit him with the ring, didn't look like he did any of that stuff. You just got a ring on the outside. If you were going to sell it that he is cheating, you got to you got to shoot it differently because I'm assume I'm sitting in the in the in the nosebleeds of, of that show. 
I ain't seeing that shit. It yeah. just looks like he punched him. He went down. He pinned. The end. I'll give you that. I'll agree with that. And it should have been your main event. Uh, Maybe. But I also like that it kicked off the show. Because your main event on this show? You want a main event. Well, yeah. I mean, but the, the main event was Swerve and Okada. They're kind of saving stuff for... This week's show coming up, which if you're listening on Wednesday, will be the Blood and Guts match tonight. But also, I thought I thought MJF and Osprey kind of held some stuff back, too, because I think they're going to run this back at Wembley. I think this is the match. You think so? Yeah, and I think MJF beats him again, but probably this time at, at Wembley, I, I bet it will be because the Don Callis family intervenes somehow and cost him the match. But you got to think, this match, for as kind of crazy athletic as what it was, Super old school for like the first 40 minutes. You got MJF. He was He's doing holds. He's powdering with to the, the outside. With the exception of that, that first intro dance move section. <laughs> to the first little part, sure, that that is, you know. But even that part was establishing the fact that like MJF is sort of taking this dude lightly. Like he's talked about Will Ospreay, like you're not the shit. And then they do a sequence and. Osprey lands on his feet, and you, MJF has the wide eyes, like "oh shit." But like going outside brawling and, and letting the little kid like give you the slap, which I thought was great. Like that's such a that's just an old school kind of feel. He called it an, a move of extreme terrorism today on Twitter. I think was what, the, yeah. what he said. And this show needs bad guy MJF. <laughs> yeah, he, he's better when he's a bad guy. Yep, I would agree with that. Is. And he is this uh, going up against Will Osprey is the perfect guy to try to get the crowd fully against MJF. Because there's not anybody that, in AEW that's really booing Will Ospreay. He's kind of like universally... Steven. You know, well, Steven... It's, it's, <laughs> I'm not booing the guy. I just, you know... Steven, Steven thinks he's not he's not the greatest. I don't think he's... The, I, I would not say he's not... He, okay. I accept that he is in the top five right now, but he is not the greatest. I don't know who I'd put as the greatest at the moment. I think if you did that list, you would end up and be like, okay, Osprey's number one <laughs> if you're running down the list. But I, I thought, the, like I said, I, I applaud AEW for just being who they are. And shit, it's going 60 minutes. To hell with it. Even love the end, MJF, the, the oxygen mask. <laughs> it's that's such a, a, a great little, little like detail. could not get up. Couldn't get up. Then – Takes they, it backstage. They do the Facebook photos, the social media photos. He still has the oxygen mask on while he's got the title. I to, thought it was fantastic. I, I think my biggest why is why did this go th go sixty instead of thirty? I mean, because this is your two hundred fiftieth episode. This is a celebration of of an arbitrary number of of episodes. You know, so this was a, a good number, and you had maybe what ten people on it. Tr true, granted, I'll give you that, but like, would we have rather have seen Hook? No, nope. I'm, I'm kind of bummed we got Chris Jericho on this episode, but like he said, he's been on goddamn near everyone. I've been on every one of them, and I'm never missing another one. He missed a lot of pandemic shows. He needs to shut up. Well, yeah, uh, but yeah, I, I, you know, like I said, I dug it. I dig where it's going. I'll save my rest of my stuff for once we get further into this show. Well, let's get into. Did you have any more left on that? No. Uh, uh, next, I've got uh, Mariah May as Tony, all dolled up, dressed up, whatever you want to call it. A new character. I mean, yeah, you, you listen, I could go on forever about this woman. Uh, I thought she was phenomenal in this as well. I'm completely biased at this point. You I are. thought she looked like a million bucks. Uh, and I can't, I'm never going to say a bad word about her. Was this the best 30 seconds of TV this this week for you? <laughs> Listen, the the top down shot of her where she's like just on the ring. Like, I don't know what you guys want for. I don't know what the fuck you want from me. I, I, like, I don't know what to say at this point. It's it's wrestling. It's kind of it's kind of simple. Like also, I'll actually I, there is something I want to say about this fucking promo. Uh, Little Rock, Arkansas. We're not starting the what shit in AEW. So let that <laughs> die. We're not going to do that. Please quit. They started that during her promo. Let's no, just leave no, it. Nobody wants that. And I did love Tony Schiavone. I don't know if you guys caught this. 
Mariah was hesitating to start at the beginning. He says, oh, just just get out with it, bitch. Yeah. You know, and they're like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> he has gotten more hostile as as he goes along. I don't I don't know what is flipped in him. It, it kind of fits, though, right? When he's go, when he's doing it against Mariah yeah. and Chris Jericho, like. It'd be different if it was like. I mean, but he's getting, he's like, he's, I don't know. He's getting, getting a little angsty with, with his co-commentators, too. Yeah, I they like need it. to chill the fuck out. They they trying to play too much, and Tony's just trying to do his job. Yeah, I think that's a lot of what it is. I think Tony's trying to stay in character, and I think Taz and Excalibur are kind of are just fucking with it. Yeah, just sort of pop each other. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's for sure. And they're like, let's fuck with the old man. But listen, you know, if you want to be critical of Mariah's promo because it wasn't the greatest, okay, I'll give you that. But like, it it did what it needed to do. Okay. It got the crowd to chant Tony's name, and that's going to be your your yep. Wembley match. So yep. I mean. That's part of it. That's the that's the gist of it. I, I got nothing. I mean, it's thirty. It was it was a, it was a quick segment. It was a blink and you missed it almost. Listen, there's a listen, between Liv Morgan and Mariah May, which we'll get to Liv Morgan and her excellence on this past Monday Night Raw. But uh, I'm just waiting for Jamie Hader to come back because when she comes back, I don't know what I'm going to do. There will be three women that will have my wrestling heart, and I don't know who I'm going to give it to. It's like the it's like the rose on the Bachelor. They, there's speculation that Hater's going to be back soon. I keep seeing it. Um, nothing real solid on it, but if you were going to do that, if she's back soon, you just hold her off until, until Wembley, and when Mariah beats Tony Storm and starts beating her down, her music hits and she comes out and makes a save. Mm-hmm. So, so you're going with Mariah in this one, huh? You think she's going to actually take the belt? I think so. I think so. I think you need – at this point, it's better suited if she wins it than if – what is Tony going to do if she holds it? I think they were kind of struggling in terms of like, well, haters out, Britt Baker's out. And it was kind of the like, well, let's just run with Tony for a while, like what they did with – Well, I mean, but they ain't changing it now because Britt, Britt ain't anywhere near that belt. Well, but I'm saying like I think they figured out – a couple months ago, like this Mariah May is, is the way to go with this. And the build up to all in, I think, is gonna be You you ask what would they do with it if if Tony keeps it? If Mariah does if Mariah takes it, what are they gonna do with it? I think you have if Jamie Hader comes back, I think you have that feud for a little bit. I mean and I think you either do something where you know, we we still haven't gotten the payoff between Britt Baker and Jamie Hader. So possibly one cost the other a, a title match. You know what I mean. So there's that feud that's kind of built in there. You can let is Mariah that any have different it. if it's Mariah or Tony at the top? Because that just sounds like plans for Jamie, not not plans for. No, it necessarily doesn't matter in that situation if between Tony or Mariah who has the belt. But why not? Tony is already established to the AEW audience, so why not try to give that title to someone like Mariah and let her run with it for. Four to five months. My before question you take is, it off if her. it doesn't matter who it is, they've done something wrong already. Well, I mean, maybe, but like I said, the the Little Rock crowd was clearly in Tony's favor. I mean, they were cheering for. So, and for as much as people are critical about AEW for not having a story, the Mariah May Tony oh, it's one hundred percent a story. It's a it's a story. Now, whether you like it or not. I guess you're, you know, you were, some people out there are probably not as ecstatic about this story and about Mariah May as I am, but you know, that's a part, part I mean, of the wrestling. It, it, it's a story. It's happening. I think the the belt should have been off this a long time ago. I just don't know where they put it. Cause that whole division sucks. I'm not all of them. So I think they on the come up. I think I had Britt back. I think get Jamie back. I think they will be all right. Yeah. it It's fine. It's probably not, you know, what we you've all got, want it to be, but Britt it's fine. Baker stuck in what is the, the women's division equivalent of the Jericho Vortex. I mean. No, on. nothing as bad as the Jericho Vortex. Yeah, that's is, it, is it slightly above the Jericho Vortex? Maybe. But the, the Vortex is the bottom of the ladder. This this thing with him is. Yeah. It's, it's insane. It's Hot off garbage. the rails. Yeah. The only other thing I had noted was the Okada versus Swerve match and the hell that broke loose at the end of that with the Bucks interfering. Um, Darby comes out from the rafters. Um, a hell of a way to end the show, I thought. We have blood and guts on Wednesday. And the acclaimed 
are part of the AEW team. I just want to point this out. The uh, who would you put on it? I don't know, man. That's the problem. When you do these big multi-man matches, you've got to have people that have a stake in what they're doing. I Swerve has established why he's doing what he's doing, right? But you have no one else other than Darby who is established. But why not any of the BCC? Yeah, that is, like if you are looking at that poster, the acclaimed and Mark Briscoe kind of just jump out. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what are they? I mean, kind of doing here. I get the acclaimed because you could. They're like former tag team champs or former trios champs with Daddy Ass, like. But now that you've mentioned the Blackpool Combat Club out loud, yes. Why are they acclaimed in it? I looked at that poster today and I looked at uh, Briscoe. And the only thing I could think of is that, you know, I'm going back here to ECW was Roadkill. Dude looks like Roadkill. <laughs> the angry Amish warrior. Yeah. And listen, I, lo I love Mark Briscoe. Shit. I like him a lot. But like, I don't, Brian, what is Brian Danielson doing right now? Yep. Anything? I mean, he, he I understand why Kenny's not there. Kenny's got injuries. Kenny, Kenny's yeah. dealing with his stuff. Brian Danielson is, in theory, the heart of AEW back there. Uh, Moxley, in theory, you could have either of those two on that match, and it would be a, an, an upgrade immediately in both storyline and work rate. Because then you could play it off as like, oh, why does Team AEW lose? It's like, well, there's animosity between Danielson and Swerve because they're about to take, they're about to have a match with each other against the biggest, one of the biggest crowds that AEW ever has this year. So like, you can build it up because I do think the bad guys are going to win. Sure. I mean, they FTR. Yeah, FTR is back. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm, what, what, how the hell did he come back from his injury so quickly? I, I don't know, but he's back. They were on I, collision. They were I, talking I about the young bucks. I assume he's lying about his injury again. You know, and they just don't care this time because they need him. Yeah, because you need to have young bucks FTR number fifteen, sixteen, six, seven. It'd be six in AEW, I believe, or five or six. Yeah. But like, they would have been an upgrade over the acclaimed, and they would have made storyline sense. And you could have also announced them Wednesday as well. And again, no offense to the acclaim, but like they were hot a year ago and then it kind of died down. Fell off a little bit. You know, you probably know not this hot a little bit ago. Who's that? Jack Perry. Well, <laughs> now listen. he's just, now he's just that face in the back. Ooh, way he's beating back. up people in his own crew. They had a moment with Jack Perry. They did. And and then they, they let him come near the Bucks and the Bucks have a have a vortex of their own as well. The only guy who has not been sucked into the Bucks vortex, and it's because he's borderline a comedic genius, I think. And that's uh Kazuchika Okada, which we didn't even oh. mention the little backstage segment where Mercedes is back there. <laughs> And he and got he, all hot and bothered. He asked her to do the dance, and then it just cuts to him, and he's just fanning himself <laughs> he's <like> off, sweaty. <laughs> Which I mean, it's just yeah, he's he's been he's been comedy for a while. I'm just I'm I will be happy when he's no longer in their orbit. So will I, and I think it will be an easy switch because he can just go back to being badass Okada again. Like the fans have a they they know him as that Orange Cassidy. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of guys you could have thrown Team AEW. It is weird that it's Briscoe and the Acclaimed. Now, that being said, the Blood and Guts matches are always insane, and I expect some insane things to happen. It'll be entertaining. That's why you put Mark Briscoe in there. And that's, you know, it probably could just come down as simple as that. It'd be like, who's willing to jump off the cage? And like, well, I'm willing to do it. I'm like, all right, well, yeah, there you go. If you're you got in Dar it. got Darby Allen and Briscoe. The other three can... Yeah. Get by with the middle of the road but shit. We, Adam Copeland walks in with his crutches. I'm in. <laughs> we did get uh, two sting callbacks. Of course, Darby, Darby Allen at the at the end, but then also Britt Baker in the sting mask oh, yeah. at the beginning. So yeah. now like established on AEW television because Jack Perry did this as well. If somebody's in a sting mask, you just have to assume there's a 50 50 shot that they're a wrestler. You just punch them and they're just going to hit you. Yeah. So just what, punch that's them, what I need is somebody to get punched in the face. And when they take off the mask, it's, it's nobody. If important. they're front row, like all of a sudden you just look over an hour in the show. Like, well, Hey, where'd you come from? That's how they play it off. Is I mean, it like there's a bad guy and he punches the sting guy. And then the sting takes the mask off. It's just a random dude. And they're like, Oh, they're the wrestlers freaking out. But then in the camera shot, somebody just pokes their head out from another one, and it's in another sting mask, and they just take that off for no reason. <laughs> and it's whoever the the baby face is trying to get the one up on the wrestler. I mean, you got a dude in this company that has an AEW tattoo on his leg. 
He does, which luckily his boot covers it up. I do want to mention one other thing about this main event, which is Hangman's turn to this falling hero type of guy. I think it's just going along perfectly at this point. The new theme music is badass. He looks like a million bucks. I don't know if you guys caught the little detail, and I wish they would have shot it better, but like right before Darby was going to come out, Matt and Nick like, were trying to say something yeah. to Hangman, and Hangman pushed him to the side and just walked to the back because he doesn't give a shit about those guys, right? Yeah. He's, he's after just, Swerve. Yep. Now, again, probably should have called that out on commentary a little bit more. Probably should have had a, a camera shot to show that, <laughs> you know, not just have it in the background. But, um, yeah, I, I just want to mention him because I, I think his his character is really fascinating right now. And there's not a lot of fascinating stuff on AEW right now. All right. Steven's like, please let's stop talking about AEW. Nah, I mean, and now on to collision, match by match breakdown. Let's start with <laughs> let's start with Darby and the dude uh, in the uh, bull mask. Now that we're at collision, let me uh, remind you that this episode is brought to you by our forbidden door of the Beast Mortis, Tomi- Tomohiro Ishii, and Gringo Loco. I will I will not take any disrespect about Gringo Loco. I like that dude a lot from GCW, but yes. Oh, sure. he was on there for real? He was uh, the hologram character. He he wrestled him. Oh, okay. Which, listen, man. <laughs> They're trying to make that something, aren't they? It, it, it's 2024. Wrestling is different. He, we're not buying wrestling superheroes anymore. I mean, he, you, you've missed the mark by 15 years. I, I will always have a soft spot for Chris Canyon. <laughs> yeah, but there's a, there's a reason why Chris Canyon was doing that gimmick in 2001 and 2000 and not 2024. You know, uh, no, it, it was rough. But, but like, dude's fast. Dude moves. Dude's a flyer. Sure. Is dude who you would bring into your thing if you were getting ready to have access to a free agent that is also of a high flying caliber but has more star power right exactly yeah the rick this should have just been ricochet not as hologram and you should have just done that and brought ricochet in and let him do all this stuff i don't know what and if you are going to do that if ricochet is going to come in you essentially are taking the shine away by having this new character be introduced that does it doesn't a, matter does a similar move set but like at 60% of what Ricochet could probably do. This character will be forgotten and off TV in, in probably three months. Probably. I do want to say, though, because I didn't mention this guy, Gringo Loco. If you if you actually want to go back and watch this match, I can't remember which luchador called him like the base god. Because in Lucha Libre, like you have the high flyer and then you have the base, which sets up for the guy to do all the high flying moves. Gringo Loco is so good at being the base in Lucha Libre. And there are little things like the way he caught hologram when he did the the top of like he he caught him on his shoulder and went down with him like that's how you're supposed to do it you're not supposed to just take it on your neck and fold over like that's how people get hurt hit the shoulder go about he's gringo loco is so technically sound and doing those things that it was cool to see him does he need to be on AEW? Eh, probably not if this was if hologram was a ring of honor character be different yeah but like we got a lot of guys in AEW, a lot of girls too that could use screen time. They could, and instead we're like I said, I, I named three from three that are not even in your company that got significant is, screen is, time. Uh, what's his name? The first one, the bull guy. The bull guy, yeah. Is he not officially AEW yet? No, he's not. He's New Japan. He, yeah. Oh, really? Okay. And Darby just wrestled him. Yep. I mean, don't get me wrong, dude. Do Darby around? Got and gave Darby, you know, the the perfect Darby match. But they're squandering. Good screen time. Yeah, and this was the first week they were also in the Austin Sports Complex or whatever, yep. eSports. And I thought the crowd, I thought it sounded more lit in there because the crowd was smaller. But it's just like, I don't really want to watch Roderick Strong wrestle whoever the fuck he wrestled. I don't even remember Come who here, it was. Ishii. Yeah. Like, I don't want to see that match. Yeah, and the motherfucker knocked out Dalton Castle two weeks ago. Just as a stiff knee. Yeah. Sometimes you get caught. Yep. You they know? said he's out the rest of the year, but they said it's from a different injury. Oh, yeah, but he cold cocked his ass, though. <laughs> 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 that, that bitch hit him right underneath that jaw. He had a couple go out this on this show. Lights out. I'm sad. Yes. Sad about Dalton. Sky Blue also got hurt. Yes, I heard about that. She got an ankle all taped up. Yeah. 
the crossbody to the bottom just went way too low. And it reminded me that her and Kyle Fletcher are, are, are a couple. They are. Sky Blue also stopped being a cowgirl yep. in a week. She, so. Yeah, she, so she's she's going through her stages of depression. <laughs> yeah. You know, when you get out of that satanic phase, sometimes it happens. It takes you a little bit to find the light. You, you, know? got, you go on a pilgrimage out to the Wild West to rope some, rope some dogs. That was just for a week while Jericho had on his cowboy hat, right? Oh, I don't even remember. I don't even remember. I and, think it was Stephen yeah. pointed out. Oh, yeah, 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 Everybody yeah. wearing cowboys. Everybody was wearing cowboys. people wearing cowboy hats. Yeah. Um, is that all y'all got for coll- collision or do you want to move on to nah, SmackDown? No, it's not. No, it's, I mean. Collision. It's a job or show. There's, I mean, the best part of that show was the theme song. And that's, that's, people are talking about how, you know, the theme song shouldn't matter. It's the quality of the show. That's great. Give me a better quality show then. Because you, you have once you have your quote unquote stars who are facing off against the quote unquote jobbers of that of of the AEW the enhance I'm sorry Dustin has asked me to stop saying jobbers the enhancement talent of that series so what did anything of note happen before i move on did anything of note happen in the trios championship yeah the patriarchy patriarchy won. Won. they won patriarchy won the end so Nick Wayne's a champ at 19. He, he's a champ. Yep. I saw that he's the champ. But it's not because of him. Well, right. Well, he's got a belt and Billy I mean, Starks has got th- a belt. This was this was the the first time in a long time that Christian carried that team. <laughs> yeah, and you know, we'll see what happens as they go forward, but it's like Trio's belts are a worthless yeah, title. Right. Kind of, what are we doing here a little bit other than resetting the bang bang gang at this point is the only thing i can figure out you're doing and i read where jay white they fear he's going to be out for quite a while damn so kind of sucks it's weird that he's got regret itis <laughs> you know that could be that always is the case it is kind of weird and i think maybe we've mentioned it on this podcast before and listen uh, old school wrestlers didn't get hurt a lot they were wrestling every day now granted they were not doing the level of of athleticism that these current guys are doing. You might catch a DDT every once in a while. Yeah, but Arn Anderson has talked about like wrestling every day kind of made your your body calloused to the mat and like they just didn't get hurt. And I, there is a part of me that wonders if maybe that's not true because these guys now, especially in AEW, they might be wrestling at least on TV once every, what, three weeks for some guys. And like a lot of them are getting hurt around things and like I, I don't know I don't know if there is some truth to the fact of like just doing it every day and making your body harden to that fact the internet would refer you to the ACL uh, that the NXT uh, performance center goes through on a regular basis and you know listen it could be that these dudes are so jacked and so athletic now that much like in the NFL with torn hamstrings and torn Achilles, we used to not see Achilles injuries all that much, but we also used to not see 285 pound defensive lineman that ran four, 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 40 yard dashes, mm-hmm. you know, like Braun Strowman. We, <laughs> I don't know. If he's running. I don't know if he's running that fast. If he was running that fast, he might not be in WWE. He might be in, in, he might in, be playing a in the NFL. Yeah. yeah. Making a lot of money, but like, yeah, I don't know if there's something to that too. We're just like the the human body's kind of outpacing itself, but it is weird that especially in AEW, it seems like these guys are and girls are just getting hurt so much. Uh, you mentioned it earlier in here where we were talking about MJ, uh, not MJF, MVP, and Bobby Lashley and Shelton yeah. Benjamin. If they went to AEW, Mm-mm. and you do not put that that belt on him immediately. You, I mean, with him, we, now Bobby Lashley speaking on his own, he ain't, ain't going to carry it, but he'd do fine over there because it ain't like there, there's any world beaters really outside of, a, you know, one or two that are champions on the mic over there. But if you don't put the, the belt on him and have him just rule that, that, that roster for a significant amount of time, what's the point? I mean, there is something to be said to that. What is, you know, what is the point of bringing in Bobby Lashley if you're not going to give him the the main title? And if you're not going to give him the main title, is he taking a step up? Is, you know, should he go to Japan? Should he go to GCW? Should he just retire? He's made a ton of money. We, like he needs it. We have seen. I mean, when was the last time Wardlow was on the on on TV? It has been a hot minute. About two months. Lance Archer can't catch a break in that place, and he's also another big guy. Kill Switch is their other big guy. Brian Cage. Brian Cage is is a jobber. Cage I'm sorry, enhancement talent. 
to the yeah he's just fucking boring pay uh brian cage has found his little niche where it's like he's just gonna get beat by guys yep he's he's, he's enhanced yeah in more ways than one <laughs> yeah. but that special creating that that show does not have a plan for big guys no you're right it doesn't and I don't, I mean, you don't want to bring them in and give them the trios belts because I don't, MVP is not going to wrestle. Nope. So, I mean, maybe if Cedric Alexander's contract is up too, he pull them in. Didn't he just get released? Or, no, nah, he's done in NXT. Just, yeah. yeah. I've always loved Cedric Alexander, yep. but yeah, no, you're right. Well, where, where would they fit in? I mean, because he would, he, there, when if you put him in the ring with any of their big guys, he makes their big guys look small. But it sounds like, from all the reports, that's where they're headed. It sounds like that's why they have, are not resigning. Like, you know, they, I guess AEW can't technically talk to those guys because they're still under contract, but like, there are ways to get messages to people that are, you skirt the rules around. Let me, let me put on my tinfoil hat real quick. Because the, 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 we've had Triple H say this is all fun and games now that, you know, we like seeing the the work in the work in the stories and, uh, of, about the contracts, who's going where and what. What if this is all a work just to have them have some kind of outsider style faction? Possible. Could be that. I'd be entertained by it. Anything's possible. Yeah. Be entertaining. It also could be as easy as like, oh, shit, they're going to pay us how much money? <laughs> yeah. I mean, heck, we got to go. Fourth person could be Rickshaw. Yeah. You can figure it out. Maybe that's what they're holding that off of. Maybe Tony has big plans to bring in but even all still, these guys. At that point, if you come, if you have him come in, he's got to, you have to have him be there for a long period of time, taking over and just dominating them. But at the same time, you can't because you got to keep all your other people happy. But there's no... It will. He. It would look legitimately better than one hundred percent of their roster. I mean, he would bring a level of star power that I think few people on that roster couldn't match. Like I think MJF could match him on the star power level. Uh, obviously, not in the physique level, but like you know, they're not going to go against each other anytime soon because they're they're probably both going to come in as heels. I would imagine. I would imagine Bobby Lashley and those guys come in as heels. They're doing the hurt business, I would imagine. Yeah. Uh, I think Swerve can match him on that level. Uh, Osprey, obviously Danielson, Moxley, but like Okada, Paige. Like that might be it, though. It might just be the top level guys. And, and you know, that's a. Uh, but again, if you're going to have some guys wrestle 60 minute matches, do you really need a roster of 80 something people? Could you really just parse it down to. We got 25 guys and I mean, yeah, we don't need show. those 60 minute matches. And, and Elton John on Saturdays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could yeah, we could have kept Elton John on Saturday. Excuse me. I'm sorry, that was the biggest loss. Because that there are so few songs that that it just gets you hyped. The tempo and the lyrics of that were perfect for that fucking show. You you back a truck up, you get rid of, you know, Serpico, Ser, and you know, all the the people that you're paying that are not doing shit. And you keep that show. You're still paying Dan Housen to be on indie shows all weekend. Boy, that guy. There was a lot of like fanfare when he came in, and that shit died real quick. Now, granted, it might be because his best friend is Phil Brooks. And once that man was out the picture, they were like, nah, anybody associated with that guy is not going to be associated with us. So he went down heel fast. But also, like, where would he fit in? Yeah, you know we that was the question we had. When I was excited signed. about it because I had heard so much about him on the Indies, oh, but like him. it just wasn't. It it he's he's it's it, a fun novelty thing, but I don't is. need it on the TV every week. I mean, it, you kind of compare it to the the Orange Cassidy style, but Orange Cassidy has a has a different format that makes yeah. it easier to fit on that show. Now, having said that. If you were like, Dan Housen's going to be at a show in Huntsville on Saturday, I'd buy the fucking ticket. And that's, why I, that's why I went to some of those uh, New South shows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are some gimmicks that just work on the indie level that went, they do not scale up Yeah, at all. Uh, so let's get into SmackDown. Y'all tell me what happened on SmackDown and I'll, I'll lose. <laughs> shit, <laughs> shit, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I the mean, bloodline yeah. beat everybody up again. Uh, you had, because this was a double tape match, right? And a double tape show because they're going to Tokyo. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Well, that makes a little bit more sense about why yeah, some they, things happen. Yeah, they had to save some of the stuff because they were doing a, a second taping because Friday gotcha. they're in Tokyo. 
Gotcha. But it was a more or less forgettable show. Yeah, I'm just trying to pull from memory. Oh, like the SmackDown from previous week? It's it's yeah. a little bit of like copy and paste. It was. And that's that's going to be – that's they need to stop doing that copy and paste of the bloodline come and beat everybody up in, in the last five minutes of a show too. because rinse, rinse and repeat is laundry. It ain't wrestling. That's true. All right, then. Well, let's get into Raw. I'm trying to – who – what even happened? Oh, there was a solid match on that show. I was just reminded. Oh, Carmelo and um, – um, <laughs> Your boy. Solid. <laughs> uh, yes. Why am I blanking? Andrade. Andrade, yes. Yeah, it was solid. It was solid. Um, it's the only thing that was good more on More of a setup yeah. for Carmelo than it is for Andrade. I think that even Andrade at this point knows kind of what he was brought back to be, which is maybe a handler for his wife and to just put guys over. Um, well, Andrade won that one. Yeah, but – the you know Carmelo got the promo to begin the thing in the back like there's he got the big entrance there's one guy who they have the star whether he won the match or, or didn't there's one guy they're they're focused on there. you had a, a squash match that with Bianca and Chelsea yes that happened I remember that now. you had a squash match with Nia Jackson somebody it's one of the things trying to recall just from memory. Like, I know that I at least saw glimpses it's like of Like I said last week, I know I saw it. Yeah. And then you had the tag match, Kevin Owens and Cody versus... Ah, Jesus, I'm just yeah. knocking this fucking mic. Down, down Under, Sorry. which basically led to Grayson diving out the way so that... Uh, 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 what the fuck's his name? Theory. Theory. Could, could catch a, a forearm from the bloodline and watch Cody and Owens get beat down. I know I've talked about Austin Theory a lot. And even when we had the the mock draft, I believe he was my number one overall pick. I continue to stand by that decision. I think this dude is a absolute freakazoid stud inside that rink. Even watching this dude sail while he's getting DDT'd and moving around the ring, it's like No, oh, he's he's a solid performer. Bro, solid, I think, does him a disservice. He he is extremely gifted and i think if you unleashed him completely not saying he's as good as will osprey but i'm saying he's not that far off from that guy which i think it's crazy because if you just polled random wrestling fans like who are the best angry wrestlers in the world i don't think austin theory makes even the top 25 and i'm telling you the dude is like top five he's up there we need to get to the stage where this the the, the pay we need to get to the payoff of the the waller theory few uh, quicker quicker yeah. rather than later yeah. yes so i'm hoping that comes out of SummerSlam, so that we can move on with it that way he can get a fresh start and kind of grow into what you hope he is i, I just don't and again maybe they are just slow playing it he's still incredibly young but it, I would be shocked if Triple H and the powers that be weren't like watching that match and being like, "This dude is he is he is a tweak or two away from being an absolute superstar because he has all the gifts. He looks like a million bucks. He moves like a phenom. Uh, you, the mic skills could be improved, obviously, but he has improved. I think he's gotten more of a personality. Yep. So yeah, I, I don't know, but when I look at that dude, I just see I see greatness in there. Which is kind of crazy because he's getting squashed. <laughs> but then again, you say the same thing about Carmelo. Uh, yeah, same thing about Carmelo. But or Lyra, Lyra Valkyrie, all these ones that they kind of brought up, or 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 my boy Ilya. They they are all taking L's right now, but I think the L's that they are taking are making them look good in defeat, and that, yeah. that's the art that is lost on a lot of. A, a lot of the, the past few years of WWE, it wasn't lo losses that elevated anybody. These are at least attempting to elevate people. Yeah, because you're not just beating Ilya down, but he's not getting a lot of dubs right now. Mm -hmm. But he's getting his licks in. Yep. But again, like Carmelo and Ilya, mm -hmm. they're, they're kind of smaller in stature dudes. <laughs> and like Austin Theory in that tag team match, the biggest dude in the ring. It's like not even, he's like not even close. He's got like 25 pounds, 30 pounds on Cody Rhodes. And he's you mean Joe Burrow twenty six. Is Cody uh, Cody Rose look at Joe uh, Burrow? Did you see Joe Burrow's yes. new, new haircut? Yeah, he shaved his head and got a bleached it blonde. 
Oh, did, when did this happen? Today. Uh, last, the shave evidently happened a week ago because uh, that was all over the feed about women losing their mind over him, losing the, the little fall into place lock. But now he's died that shit. Yeah. Damn. He looked like Eminem. Or to Cody Rhodes. Yeah. That means Joe Burrow's about to go score shirt on this NFL season. And I saw the opposite take. Somebody on Twitter was like, this man's going 0 17. <laughs> I'm sorry. Ain't, 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 a, ain't a, a league in there that's going to let him go 0 17 and when the Panthers are around. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So uh, let's get into Raw. Um, first note from you, Stephen. Yeah. I don't even know what I said anymore. I just started typing shit. Damian Priest does what he should have done last Oh, damn straight he did. He finally did. I mean, he should have done this a week ago when when Gunther was talking his shit and told him that, you know, his parents did, did right. And instead of just, you know, pouting like a like a like a fool, he came out here this time, didn't say a damn word, punched him in the face. That's what I needed. I mean, still don't care. Yeah, I do not care. I still can't wait for him to lose (laughs) on Saturday. He at least did the right thing this time. Man, Gunther, the mic skills have shot up. 100%. 100%. Um, And he is so good. I know what I said. And I meant it. (laughs) Like we talked about, leaning into the little right wing kind of thing. I, I think it's incredible. Uh, again, he looks like a legit champion. Not only did he get this promo time, they also did a video package about him, which if that doesn't show you that this dude's about to win the championship in at SummerSlam, like... I would have liked to have seen him be a little bit more dominant in this fight because he was, he was taking a lot of punches without giving a lot of stuff. But when they cut back to the backstage and the fight continued at randomly, he did slightly better. So here's my thing. There ain't nary a note about Rhea Ripley. Oh, there is. It's just disguised. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, we got the, the the wit in there. Oh, I see now. There is. I was Don't like, you worry. I was like, who is Dominique? Do- Dominic. I just spelled okay. it wrong. <laughs> I, well, it, it went completely over my head. We'll get there. We'll get there. Don't you worry. So, so they they we thought that we were rid of meaner than evil. We are not. It came back. Came brought back. it back unfortunately i mean at this point i sound like a broken record about the guy but it's just like i you're not helping him oh, did you enjoy the match Sh- sure it was fun i thought he murdered Ilya. damn straight he did and yeah but, but i mean talking about that uh, spear at the end i thought he legit knocked him out again he looks cool but it, the music is awful yep the entrance tron awful yep the gear awful yep but and knew he will soon have some oh, accessories. Yeah. I do think you, will, he, I th- you know. So you think he gets gets it over Sammy at SummerSlam? Yeah, I do. Because I, I think that they, they have big plans for him. But it's like, it is kind of baffling that like, okay, you have big plans for him. You're going to give him the Intercontinental Championship. But is nobody in that room looking at him and being like, bro, we got to help the dude out because it he looks I think, like I think they're letting us see I think they're trying to see if he can overcome those those hindrances but like why just that's so stupid to me just help him out but it, but that's how that shit works you know this just help him out just be like hey bro you can't come out with meaner than evil on your ass cheeks yeah and then then six months be like this ain't working well yeah <laughs> yeah yeah but like why are people saying he's boring and generic it was like well that's on you dog yep. that's on you guys but he's but he's he's overcoming those hindrances to me sure but in professional sports like a good example i don't don't know if you guys are watching WNBA, but like caitlin clark the indiana fever coach or or her coach for indiana fever just dog shit they're just gonna fire her at the end of the (laughs) end end of the year and bring in probably the girl that was her coach at iowa so it's like if you are hindering somebody's development usually somebody removes you panthers (laughs) <laughs> yeah, somebody. I'm sorry, we, we, we let that shit happen and then we get rid of the good people. You so that's us- why I don't have a problem with what we're doing here. You usually get removed from hindering that person. So it, again, it's just kind of crazy to me that they don't see this or but, have any other kind of plan. But this is wrestling and that is built into the, to the, the way wrestling has always been. And I think that's part of the mentality of, of, of seeing if you, because you will be saddled with some shit gimmicks as a wrestler. 
And if you can step above them, it shows your star power more than that. It's kind of like looking at it from an actor perspective. You will get some shit scripts. But if you are the best thing in that in that movie, you're going to get better scripts. True. I mean, this is a little bit of like, you know, they give Dusty Rhodes the, the polka dots and he overcomes it. But then they they realize later that that was stupid and they shouldn't have done that. But did he stop? No, I mean, they did not stop. But also, that was the old regime, right? That was old old McMahon. I All thought right. this was new. Well, I'm sure there's still some holdovers there. Just give the, just give the dude fucking something else. Anything oh, I, I agree. Point. I'm 100% behind you. I think you could write a bunch of adjectives on a, on a whiteboard. Fucking just throw darts. And whichever two it lands on, you just do that. They're like, oh, satanic, emo cowboy. That's just sky blue. <laughs> we'll just or we'll give them that. At this point, that doesn't matter. That's more interested than them. Ron Brecker looks like he drives a lifted truck. And he's, he just comes out and he's fucking got tobacco. So, so what? Do you want him to, to wear a pair of truck nuts to the, to the ring? But you know what? At least if he did that, they're running in that direction. At least it's something. Right now, it's this in-between middle ground where it's like, I don't know what it is. If he pulled up and they had a video, he pull, he's pulling up, lift a truck, gets out, has a Mountain Dew bottle just spitting dip into it, and just walking in there and beating people's ass. I'm like, okay, at least that's something. See, here's the thing. I think this might be his personality. <laughs> it could be. Help the dude out then. Help him out. Yeah, he's not bringing anything else to the game in that that aspect. Well, also, and it doesn't help, his name is Braun Breaker. <laughs> they need to come up with a new, he can't have two Brons. The, the double K thing put, is a put off for me too, because I mean, you're, you're a little close to that triple K, baby. And, and you know there's going to be a sign that they will confiscate at some point yeah. that will have that in there. The, my biggest hate on this match is it was a Pat McAfee comment. When he went up there to do the Frankensteiner and he coined it and I had to rewind this three times to figure out what the fuck he said. But then I, I finally clicked the break and Steiner. And I want that to I want that to not be a thing so bad. Yeah, you can't do that. It's a Frankensteiner. Can't can't get to make new moves like that and call them new things. Especially when I hope you lose that name in the next six months. Yeah, I do. I do not want that to be a thing. So next up, we got an Otis comment. Yeah, because we had Alpha Academy. We had Alpha Academy versus who? It was a uh, 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 fast forward. Uh, Final Testament. That's right. Oh with, yeah, with, yeah. With uh, Xavier Woods in the first tag team match he's had in a decade that did not have another member of the New Day in it, which is a crazy stat. Insane. Um, so we had that match was fine. It wasn't anything special, but the outcome of that was Gable coming out with his new crew, the Creeds, to to. Get uh, in Otis's face and try to get him to join. And the crap. And we're going to talk about this later, but I'm going to just jump ahead. Green Bay. Mm, damn. Green Bay. You on. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, y'all were y'all were a good crowd for that for that show. Because when Otis was out there saying no and getting ready to put the hurt on Jake Gable, y'all were ready for it. Y'all didn't disappoint. Y'all put over Otis like the like he deserved. I appreciate that. Thank you, Green Bay. And Otis is going to get his ass whooped at some point down the line. For He's going to get sacrificed at the altar of trying to get the Creeds and Chad Gable over as a I don't know, because then we got the – because my, my, my thing was there he is, Otis, I think is what I put it as, because who popped up with that – not a good mask. I'm going to say that. That mask needs some work or his outfit needs some work, one of those two. It's a little, little much. I thought the mask was better than the last time we – we saw the mask. It was. It's, has, it's, it's still is it not different? great. Yeah, it's different. Okay. Yeah, they put braids and stuff on it. That's okay. That's what it was. I was like, there is something different. But the, about the this. outfit he was wearing with it didn't. It, there was there was something off on what on the presentation. But that there he is, and then grabs him into that sister Abigail, and again Green Bay, thank you. When that at sister Abigail hit, and dude spiked his ass full on headstand. Yeah. I mean, it was a wicked looking. Sister I just Abigail. don't know what happened to the Creeds because they were standing in ringside. They, they took were, off. did the the people that came out the door uh, get them? I don't think so because I think if I remember correctly, and you guys might remember a different way, they just showed the people at the door, and then the Creeds stood there kind of waiting, and then Uncle Howdy snuck in and hit the Abigail. He goes down to his knees, and they go to commercial. I assume maybe they got hit by they were security guards then. <laughs> well, yeah, they, I guess they just have phantom powers. They're able just to just knock people out. But I'd also like to say this is uh, also this episode has the first miss for me for the uh, for the Wyatt Six. We had a video package uh, for Nikki Cross. Oh, I missed that. 
and you didn't. You didn't miss it. <laughs> you didn't. It was weak. The thing that I thought was hilarious about that is that Michael Cole set it up saying, and now we're going to find out more about this witch character. And we didn't. It was just. No. She screamed. She just screamed. She and they damn did, word. They just did shots and kept it kept it moving. And it was. And this. If she is going to be in that group. And I don't know if this is on her for not developing a character. I don't know if they don't have a character in the back for her or what. But she is now your weak link in that 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 whole presentation right now. I mean, I'm sure we'll get there, but we're going to have to get to at some point these people taking the mask off and either like wrestling or putting them on. Like we we got to get to that point now. And I'm thinking it's her because if you look at all her characters, they are not vocal. I don't know. I mean, obviously, I guess they are going to wrestle Chad Gable first. I don't yep. know when that match will be, but That's SummerSlam, I would assume, right? I'm guessing. Yeah. I mean, SummerSlam is what next Saturday? Mm-hmm. Or is it this Saturday? Next. It's next. next. So we have another week of another week of programming before we get there. But uh yeah, I mean again, I'm not I'm not annoyed by the Wyatt Six or Sick. I'm also not like fascinated by them. They're just they are just kind of there for me. The production of those Little spooky videos is cool. Yeah, it's fine. Like I, 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 Jamie asked me if what I thought about it while we were watching the show last night. I was like, it's fine. Like, but I was like, the the payoff needs to be in the ring, and it never works the way it should. It, especially for those type of characters. Yeah. If you're waiting for a payoff in the ring, it's not going to come. So I don't know. Dallas um, Bo has when he took his beating. I he mean, has he, potential. He's better than his brother. Well, I mean, I think we can all say that. He's a better wrestler than his brother was. But again... Eric Rowan, or whatever he's going to go by now. I mean, he's decent enough. He's a solid big man. Yeah, but we kind of just need more leading up. And maybe we'll get it. I Joe Gacy is going to be your, your most proficient wrestler in that group right now. I'm still, you know, I'm I'm slightly optimistic. Not fully optimistic, but slightly. It's not bad. There are worse things that are happening in WWE right now than these guys. Sure. Yeah. Smackdown. Yeah, all, pretty much all <laughs> Most SmackDown. SmackDown. Yeah, um, which is sad. SmackDown. Remember when SmackDown? Remember yeah. when SmackDown was a shit? Yeah. Remember when we used to come on here and be like, "Oh shit, SmackDown." If Raw could be like SmackDown, I mean, got it down to two hours. You know, now you know, fuck, Raw is three hours and is, is outperforming SmackDown, SmackDown on every level. SmackDown is like Rampage right now. I wouldn't go that far. This is the last it, no. weeks. If it's, y'all said if, if it was as bad as y'all said it was, is it Collision? I. Collision is not that far behind. <laughs> it's not, but what what SmackDown has over Collision is they're at least using talents that are all on the roster. That's true, but you just and you're getting storyline progression. You got a you got a Logan Paul and L.A. Knight verbal spar. <laughs> yeah, which I thought Logan Paul kind of bodied yeah. L.A. Knight on the 100%, mic. One hundred percent, and we didn't even really? talk about that. Yeah, well, just to go back to that quickly. I mean, Logan was cooking that guy on the microphone. I don't. It, it, Whoever this, wrote that for him needs to well, step this, back. He's done it a couple times now. So in, in those big moments, I think, I don't know if he's just got a bad delivery and doesn't remember the lines, gets a little stage fright or what, but this is not the first time he's just not returned fire on somebody who's, when Miz was bodying him, if you mm-hmm. remember. And I mean, Logan, I mean, shit, to be a damn celebrity, he's pretty much there every fucking week. Seems like well, not this is he's this will be his second match in what six months. Oh well, the matches there's one thing, but like you know, leading up to the pro, like he misses time. So like before SummerSlam, he'll come back in, yeah, and shit like that. But like you know, a normal celebrity, are they gonna go to Little Rock, Arkansas, or wherever? Where was fucking SmackDown at this week? Uh, I don't was remember it in where Texas? it was. At. Yeah, it was some like little. I don't think it was like a huge city. So I don't know why I wanted to say it was Little Rock, but maybe that's where that's where Dynamite was at. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but yeah, he is he's fantastic on the microphone, and he's he's good in the ring, and it's it, kind of crazy that he didn't grow up a wrestling fan because he just he gets it. Yeah, he's naturally gifted in that sense. That's the part that sucks because I'm like ah, I don't want to like this guy, but he's really fucking good in the ring. It, he he is that. But again, it's it's a lot of guys can be good in the ring, right? You can have a level well, of But he's F- good F- with the mic too. <laughs> but that's the thing that's crazy is that like he he's good 
talking shit on the microphone mm-hmm. in a way that feels believable he and, grew not, up on the internet. and not forced. And that's a big thing. He grew, he grew up, uh, you know, being a, twi- a Twitch guy. Uh, and yeah, it's, uh, it, it, it makes me want to see the match. I still hope that LA Knight wins. Omaha, Nebraska. So great. Yeah, he shit going on in Nebraska. Logan Paul ain't got to come to Nebraska. But, you know, he comes to Nebraska, Nebraska and does the thing. Kudos to him. So the next note says Finn is over this shit. Finn is the one that's behind all this shit, I think, at this stage. I mean, you see that look when Rhea was trying to tell them not to do shit and Finn gave that, that side eye? I think we're moving on with this. Finn's going to be your, your your breakout villainous heel, which I am all for. Get, let him be a sound, technical, ass-whipping destruction machine. So and- then here's the thing. Why not just let Finn win the briefcase at Money in the Bank? How much interesting does this story become if he's the one that has the contract? And did did McIntyre have to win it just for Punk to screw him over again? I think no. I think they could have screwed him over without him actually getting the briefcase, him being up on the the ladder, Punk knocks him off. I think you could have done that. And I I, I, I like that story better, honestly. The 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 Finn getting it and having that that lingering doubt of is he gonna cash it in on his friend? But at the same time, if you are not going to pull the trigger on Finn doing it. Well, yeah, yeah, granted. And maybe it was a situation where, okay, now now it's time for Gunther mm-hmm. to have it. But also, could you have done a thing where Finn screws over, Finn tries to screw over Priest? I think we're going to get that at SummerSlam. And then, you know, if Finn has the money in the bank contract, money, you know, Finn immediately tries to cash in on Gunther, who's a champion, and Priest screws him over. And then you ride it out. Boom. Now you got to, now you have it. Gunther's a champion. The money in the bank briefcase is no longer a thing. Well, we're, we we're, we're in that same story with Drew having it, and I still think Finn is going to screw over Damian. We'll get that storyline of the, them feuding for a while. But I think it just would have been more interesting leading up to it if Finn would have had the, the case just dangling in the background. Maybe. You know, because then you could have had a little, you could have had a segment where Priest is telling Finn, hey, the two of us are going to run WWE. We're going to be champions. But then again, you also just had a year of Damian Priest and shitting on that case in the Judgment Day already. I mean, granted, poison in the well, but that's why you do it at right at SummerSlam where Finn gets screwed. You know, Finn loses it. Um, l- listen, Judgment Day has run its course. Yep. It has probably done what it needed to do. Yep. It got Rhea Ripley to be a top star. It's established Dominic as a solid villain. So let's time to to disband the band. Let's go all go do some solo projects. I don't Maybe think we're going to get a full solo project. I think a couple of these guys are going to go form a band on their own. Because JD and Finn are going to stay tag team for a little bit. And maybe that's fine. Maybe they can do a little duo album. I, th- I think this Finn being the villainous will help JD step up to because that used to be his gimmick of being the the uh, the ace, the, the uh, Irish ace, where he was just going to hurt you. He was going to fuck you over. And Finn's got a little bit of that in, too, in him, too, because obviously he trained the motherfucker. But- Fergal. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think it's time for him to step up and be that. That's the real name. And I think you're going to get this new band. And we'll talk about that in the next one. But I got a question to ask once you get there. Go ahead. I did, go ahead and let's get to where okay, we're going. Because I, I wrote this. I want to hear you say it. <clears throat> I bet Dominic tastes like Boeing bombs, fireworks, and lotion. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you make me read that shit? Because that's a Joe Dirk reference, damn it. <laughs> a little Joe Dirk. I love it. With that, with that fucking mullet. <laughs> that is a Joe Dirk mullet if you ever saw it. He's going to turn. Uh, um, my question is, does your wife listen to this? She probably will again now that Rhea's back. Okay. I'm about to break her heart. Dominic's going to fuck her. Well, not the not that not the good kind of way. I mean, <laughs> the other kind of way. He is gonna he is gonna screw Rhea so hard. And the, again, not yeah, the good the other way. way. Yeah, the other kind of way. <laughs> he is not gonna cost way. her that match on 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 SummerSlam. And we're gonna find that he's in be- he's in bed again in that kind of way. <laughs> <laughs> that, the, the right you kind got of there. Way. Yeah, with with, with Liv, because Dominic is attracted to those kind of girls. <laughs> Listen, brother, 
It's hard. It's hard out here nowadays. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, listen, says Carlito. <laughs> says Carlito. Rhea Ripley has she has uh, emasculated you multiple times. I this mean, woman live out here is calling you gorgeous, daddy. She she got those shorts that just are barely barely shorts, and it could, probably could have been illegal wherever they're at. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if she wasn't on TV, probably would have got arrested for indecent exposure. Uh, just 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 go to the evil side, Dominic. Just just go there. If the dance made Okada sweat, that would have made him pass out. Oh, Okada, yeah. He'd have fell right out in the ring right there. Uh here's the thing. This can Dominic hit Rhea? Can he slap her at SummerSlam or or would that be a thing that'd be like in the front of the New York Times? It'd be, yeah. Like would that just become a big thing? I don't know at this stage. I really don't. I, I mean, she full. I mean, she gave that. She grabbed that hair, jerked his ass back, licked him, and choked him on 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 screen, as a non threatening way. Yeah, but it feels like that's what this needs. Is we we need to get a match between Rhea and Dominic. And may, again, maybe this is completely I mean, out of the cards. We get, did we get a? I refresh my memory because it's been what fifteen years. Did we get a China versus Eddie match? I can't remember. But, you know, on the American Indies, we've seen intergender wrestling mm -hmm. for a while. Yeah. But, a long time. But, yeah. But, but but on a national scale like this where you have kids. I don't, I don't think they've done it in AEW yet. And Kenny has been pushing for it. No, they haven't done it. So, that's where, to me, this would need to go. Dominic would need to put hands on Rhea. End up costing her the title again. A little, a slap, a little punch, something. What, what do they do with Carlito if the Judgment Day breaks up? Because just, I laughed so fucking hard last night when they asked him a question. He's like, "Won't you ask um, Liv?" And he was like, <laughs> <laughs> "He he is the the perfect comedic aspect of this, where he's he's saying what we're all thinking." Yeah, and he he's getting paid handsomely to like be a, be the comedic relief for the Judgment Day. So I think he forms. I think he's still in the band when when. Dominic and Rhea split to do their solo projects. It's like the no, because they, they're not they've reached their creative like, differences. They're not no like longer. Fleetwood Mac. They're not going to sing to each other on stage yeah. every night. And Rhea will still be in the orbit to chase Liv, and and I think they'll bring in their new lead singer and Liv. So you you think for real that Liv wins next weekend because she gets screwed? One hundred percent. Oh yeah, hundred. I don't even think that's a question. You, 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 you were going to have some problems at your house. I'm sorry to be the one to tell you this right here in this in this yeah. room right now. I'm sorry, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Just be like, listen. That's what you know. Dims the brakes. Dims the brakes. That's how it goes. She'll get it back eventually. But that revenge tour. She has taken. Liv has told you she has taken everything. I, I think after the actions of what happened last night, I think because I at first I was like, they got to put this belt back on Rhea. But I'm like, <sighs> everything. She got the title. She going to take Dom. She going to take the Judgment Day. Mm -hmm. And then Rhea will be left with she'll have no faces to lick. Except um, Damien or Jay. I guess go, she'll get Jay. She'll go home to Buddy. She'll, she'll be all right. She'll, she'll yeah. go out, out to the Waffle House. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jay so wants to take her to Jay the Waffle House. Jay will be there to scoop her He's up like, on the rebound. It's, it's cheap, but it's good quality. <laughs> It's good. I don't know if those words I would have used for Waffle House of good quality. Didn't he say he's like, you got to go to one in the South, though? Yeah, it's the only place they are. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. I, bro, I love Waffle House. Don't I don't. Out. I like Waffle House. Waffle House but is do you um, do you think it's high quality food? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Without question. Come on. You've seen I them prices? That ain't, that ain't high quality food price. Bro, for 10 bucks? Come on. Pecan Waffle. Get you a Grand Slam, baby? That's all you get. That's Denny's. No, it's it's All Star. All Star. Yeah, Grand Slam is shit. All, all Star, Star breakfast. With the fucking waffle? Yeah, pecan waffle. Not just any waffle. Chocolate yeah. chip waffle. No, it's too much. Too, <laughs> too much waffle. sweet on the thing. Because by the time you put the syrup on there, just blow it all honest, out. When I go, I don't even get a waffle. Bruh, it's the house of waffles. <laughs> I don't. You can't. Okay. I would keep you out. What are you doing? I, I, if I, if you get, and I went to Waffle House together and you didn't order waffle, I would get up and leave. I, I should have country... known when I was in college, I dated a girl that would get the patty melt every time. And I should have known then. There you oh, go. Man, I love me a Waffle House patty melt. Bad. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Greasy ass bread. But I'll get myself a side of country ham. I'll get myself the hash browns. Smothered and covered. I don't fuck with the waffle. I don't eat it. Waffle, pecan waffle, 
Hash browns, plain. I don't like all that bullshit on them hash browns. But I can also say this. City ham, scrambled eggs, toast, about five cups of black coffee. <laughs> I, I'm not a breakfast man. Every time. I'm not a huge breakfast guy either, but that's what I go you Waffle go House. You go fucking lunch. Yeah. Yeah. Or you go at 12 a.m. I'm, I'm sorry. There's a time. I don't know why y'all are living in this, this anarchy of a world where after 12, after 11, 10, 30, 11 o'clock, breakfast is no longer acceptable. I ain't talking breakfast for dinner. I ain't talking breakfast for lunch. If it is, my body stops demanding breakfast at roughly 11 o'clock. No, oh, bro, you got to live a little bit. No, breakfast, that's for dinner, <laughs> breakfast for dinner is one of my favorite things. Oh, in the hell world. No. Sometimes you got to go to Bojangles and get you a couple biscuits just because for the hell of it. No, oh, man. No, if I go to Waffle House, it's only breakfast and it's only the all star. The everything else on the menu is just like a, it's it's they're not actually telling you to get that, you know. It's kind of like the 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 fake fruit in the bowl, you know. You're not actually supposed to eat it. It's just there for decoration. It's graphic, but, I, but I love that waxy taste. <laughs> yeah, no, that's all you get. There's one thing at the Waffle House, and it's got to be made by a guy that just got out of the county about 72 <laughs> hours ago, uh, and he's got the little sleeves because he's cover up the tattoos because you can't let people see that. He's got about four teeth in his head. It looks like a Briscoe. But hey, he ain't trying to hide nothing. Right there it is. Just trying to pay his, his bills. Oh, and, and I ain't telling no lies because they'd clean them dishes right the fuck in front of you. I, I have sat up on the bar and watched this lady pull a plate and just grab her hand into that mess of half-eaten just whatever the fuck it was and pull it into the garbage can on multiple plates. And I'm like, why? what what choices have I made in my life that, that I'm watching this woman do this as I'm getting ready to watch her to serve me food? You've made the best ones. The best ones are what get, got you there. Listen, you don't get your fancy act. Take your ass over to Olive Garden. Eat some bullshit Italian food. Go, yeah, go get you some fucking another uh, broken me, egg. Me. I don't know why we're being so mean excuse to Steven me. right now, but the excuse Waffle me. House thing. Excuse me. He I, can I, say whatever he wants about AEW, but the Waffle House is a step too he's far. He's going to go to another broken egg it. and pay $30 oh, for some eggs like, Benedict. I, that, that's, I, don't, I don't eat eggs. That's my problem. Crab Benedict. Bro, you got to eat eggs. No, I don't. I ain't got to do shit. You ain't oh, making me do that. And I might like the the Olive Garden food, but I ain't got Olive Garden money. That's true. But you got Waffle House money, and the Waffle House food is better than the Olive Garden. And as food. Jay Uso said, it's cheap. It's, it's quality. quality. If it's good enough for the Usos, it's good enough for me. <laughs> yeah, they got all kinds of money. He ain't but, worried about finances. But, well, fine. Take, take take your wife to Waffle House to console her as she is as she is crying she on that will, evening. We went about a month ago. Three o'clock. <laughs> we were like, fuck it, let's go get some waffle house. She, she will need some pick me up food when she sees Rhea walking home from SummerSlam without that belt. Carter had never been to Waffle House. I mean, he went when he was little, but he didn't remember it. And he said he'd never been to Waffle House. So about two or three months ago, for some reason, we were near Athens and we were like, there's a Waffle House right there. So let's go to Waffle House. What did he do wrong that you needed to punish him? Buddy, he he, he wouldn't stop talking about it. <laughs> and then we went again about, it was the day we moved. So it's been more than a month. It was several months ago. But the day we moved, the movers left and we were like, all right, where are we going to eat? And I was like, there's a Waffle House about a mile from here. That sounds perfect. Yeah. We were fucking starving. My youngest loves it. He does. That's I mean, great. He, he, but he's a chocolate chip waffle kid. Well, you know what? For children, I'll grant them, you know. I usually do just do mine plain. Sometimes I do get the chocolate chip. You got to go pecan. Try pecan. <laughs> just pe- try it. It's the way to go. I think we mentioned this before, but you can go to the alabamatake.com and search Patrick Acres, And you could probably just search Waffle House. There is a, a grand essay that he wrote two or three years ago about the Waffle House. It's it's legitimate. And I'm not, I'm not doing this for a bit. Like, I, I legitimately love that place. This is not like me being fake. Like I said in that essay, I've had multiple birthday dinners in my life. At least eight of them have been have taken place at the Waffle House. Why are you rolling up your sleeve to show off a Waffle House tattoo right now? <laughs> I got an MJF. It's on my it's on my calf. There you go. It says Waffle House. I think we need to probably end it on that note unless y'all got any. I think we've covered all the notes. No, we'll talk about SummerSlam, I guess, preview next week. Yeah. We'll have more matches, which I think most of them have already been announced. But yeah. there'll probably be a couple. Raw is the, the healthier side of that that card. Yeah. Don't, are they only doing five matches there? Will they I would assume more? so. That that seems to be their bread and butter. Mm. Gotcha. Is it two nights this year? No, well, just one. So next year it'll be two nights? Yeah. 
All right. Well, uh, thanks y'all for listening. And if you don't already, please follow us on Instagram and threads at Alabama Slam Pod and uh, Twitter. Also, uh, Twitter is where we get most of our activity, even though I'm trying to move away from it. But it is what it is. And go to the AlabamaTake.com to read Patrick's essay that I mentioned, among others, um, and listen to other podcasts that are released through the Alabama Take throughout the week. There's uh, two couple sports pa- podcasts, book podcasts, TV podcasts, uh, Star Wars podcasts, music podcasts, and more. And uh, yeah, tell a friend about us if you haven't already. And um, we'll talk to y'all next week. Bye.